By the CIA and other intelligence agencies has painted a gloomy picture of the situation in Afghanistan. The document says the country is in stalemate despite U.S. Army General's optimistic outlook. It warns that attempts to improve security have been undermined by corruption, bad local government and Taliban attacks from neighboring Pakistan. To talk more on this, I'm now joined by Zaid Hamid, a defense analyst at the independent think tank Brass Tax. One of the problems, according to this report, is that Taliban fighters are finding safe haven in neighboring Pakistan, where you are. Is this due to the current political infighting in Islamabad between the government, the judiciary and the military we're seeing at the moment? You see, what is happening is that there is a complete political chaos in Islamabad. The government is corrupt, it is treacherous. The Americans had imposed this regime to achieve the objective of softening up Pakistan for the doctrine of AFPAC. But what is actually happening is that Pakistan army has started to regroup, reorganize, and this government is now on the verge of collapse, which is also collapsing the U.S. strategic games in the region. They had counted upon Pakistan government's help to defeat Taliban, and that's not happening. On the contrary, this report that you have mentioned, basically what the Americans are now trying to do is they pass the responsibility of their failures in Afghanistan upon Pakistan. And this is also corroborated from the fact that the NATO supplies that Pakistan has blocked today in Pakistan contain the military hardware, which is an invasion level hardware, almost nine armored infantry divisions and and their support equipment, supplies, weapons and ammunition are stuck in Pakistan. And the concern in Pakistan army is that if the Americans are talking of withdrawing from Afghanistan, they're talking of peace deals with Taliban, then why would the Americans need Abrams M1A1 main battle tanks and almost nine armored infantry divisions to, in Afghanistan to fight an insurgency where they are talking of peace deals. But isn't, so, it, isn't, it, isn't the U.S. seeing a failure from Pakistan's uh, behalf? Therefore, it feels it's got to do the job itself. That's why it's got the U.S. military hardware going through those passageways into Afghanistan through Pakistan. Isn't that right? No, that's not right. You see, the fact of the matter is that to, to sustain an insurgency in Afghanistan, you need a massive supply line for the Afghan resistance, which is not coming from Pakistan. You need training areas which are not coming from Pakistan. And you, know, you need secure base, base areas and safe havens. And the main fighting in Afghanistan is taking place in Hilmand and Kandahar and, and those regions which are much further, hundreds of kilometers away from the North Waziristan region where the Americans are saying the actual backbone of the resistance lies. So basically, Pakistan army doesn't buy this. And now there's a concern in Pakistan army that these kind of intelligence reports are actually designed to create an environment to invade Pakistan from under the AFPAC military doctrine. And that is why you find this unprecedented blockade of NATO supplies from Pakistan. So, so, and there so are just, even just discussion to clear, of... Just to make it clear what you're saying, the Pentagon says it cannot guarantee there won't be a military coup in Pakistan. It's an internal matter for Pakistan to sort out. And yet you're saying perhaps there is an intention for the US to get involved. You see, the fact is that Pakistan army does not want to take over the government militarily because this government has taken up a war with the Supreme Court as well as with the army. So army wants the Supreme Court to deliver the coup de grace and impose a caretaker civilian setup. But if the Supreme Court delays beyond a red line, then the army will move in itself for the kill. Because the concern factor is that while the AFPAC military doctrine of the Americans is doing a build-up for an invasion level build-up, which would Pakistan army fields would be invading Pakistan areas, Pakistani tribal areas, where Pakistan army will have to get involved in a high intensity conflict, perhaps with NATO and the American forces. And the Indians on the Eastern Theater are building up their cold start military doctrine, which means Pakistan would be trapped between two military pincers. And that is the concern. So Pakistan military will not wait for long. The government in Islamabad is not delivering its treacherous and either the Supreme Court will deliver the coup de grace or the army will move in. Okay, so there's can no I, can doubt I just about quickly that. ask, in the light of what we're hearing at the moment, the plans to have peace talks, US-backed peace talks between the Taliban and the Afghan government, do you think they could be effective? Do you think that could change the whole situation that you're talking about if those talks were successful? Just briefly. There will be no talks. There's no possibility of those talks being successful. There's just a farce that's going on. On in reality, 
on, on the ground, Taliban are trying to take up the initiative, the advantage of the U.S. weaknesses, but they will definitely, the terms that the Taliban have given, the withdrawal of the extra regional forces, the collapse of the Kabul regime, those terms, are, the conditions that are given by Taliban as such, can never be accepted by the Americans or the Kabul regime. Peace talks mean nothing. Okay, Saeed, thank you very much. Saeed Hamid, defense analyst at the Brass Tax Independent Think Tank, joining us live there in Islamabad. Really interesting to hear what you have to say. Thank you.